if you're unhappy where you are, the way you're living, the way you're feeling, the way you're, whatever it is, it's possible for you to make change. You're gonna remember this every day for the rest of your life. If you wanna to get to a goal, if you wanna to get to your dream, you gotta focus on all the little steps. You have to put in your time. You have to be patient and you have to enjoy the process. Whatever you're doing now, whatever you wanna be great at, whatever you wanna be special at, I'm sure you, you may be already be good at it, but to be extraordinary, you have to do extra. I firmly believe that we are all here for a very specific reason, to do something truly extraordinary. But what are you gonna to do to get there? Greg Scheiman is a, I wrote it down, executive, husband, dad, athlete, podcaster, the list certainly goes on. Uh, wife Kate, two boys, which are looks like they're doing amazing. and. I'll say this, watching you train, yes. it, it looks like uh, you're getting better with age. So kudos to you. How do you feel? Thank you. I feel great. Man. Yeah. I, I feel great. And I got to tell you, like, I'm just inspired by men like you. I see the other guys that you train, you know, the men that you train. I, I know them almost through Instagram. I feel like I know them personally. You know, I see guys like Evan in the gym. I see you know, the guy on the rowing machine with the with the sleeveless shirts. I see like I Art. I see these guys and I see, you know, Sharif and several even of, of the guys that I've known and lived vicariously through what you've built with anatomy, which is extraordinary. I've even had the chance to have a few of them on the podcast and get to know them. And when I drop in there, you feel like you know each other and you're part of this culture yeah. and part of this lifestyle. And it, it perpetuates. Mm -hmm. I absolutely believe uh, that I'm in better shape now. And by that, I mean, you know, emotionally, spiritually, you know, mentally, you know, the physical you know, is one thing. But what's really happened over the last few years, man, has just, it's transcended the physical and everything in life has gotten better with age. And you know, we, we can dig into this. It's like, but I was thinking about it this morning, before, you know, before we did this, I'm like, you know, what do I want to talk about? You know, like, like Mark's bringing me on and like, like, Again, you are the beacon, the North Star of, of preparation and consistency and accountability. And it's like, my, like my dad passed away at 47. His life ended at 47. My life began at 47. And I'm 49 now. Like, that was the tipping point, the bonus time, the, the let's fucking go, man. Like, the best days are not behind you. They're ahead of you. Like it's super exciting for me to book a trip to Miami and know that I'm going to come in, you know, and, and train with you guys. And that that whole neighborhood now is like health and fitness row from when I used to live there at Sunset Harbor and there was nothing but Joe Allen and Publix and some storage facilities. Right. Just That's go there right. now and to like train and to watch the cars and the people come in and to, to have the juice bars and the other stuff around there. It's like everything's gotten better with age. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're leading the way. Wow. I don't know what to say. Thank you for your kind words. And uh, it's uh, certainly humbling to hear those things. I will tell you that um, watching the way you do things, you set such a positive example and do such a great job. It's, um, it's something special. So kudos once again. But, you know, the gentlemen, the, the, the men that I am fortunate enough to work with, uh, Dan Turner, uh, Sharif, um, you know, they're, they're all like this super hard workers, uh, Barry, they, they inspire me because they want to do it each and every day and they get after it each and every day. They never complain. They're all, it's like, they're always having a great day and they're just a, I mean, I feel like I should be like doing more for them. It's just super inspiring. And what you said, everyone's getting better with age. I, I think, you know, I, I'm just going to say this, it's your energy and your attitude and I know you're well aware of that, but it's so special that people want to be around it and it's, it's contagious. So thank you. No, I, I appreciate it very much. Uh, the reality is it was not always like this. Yeah. And, and I think it's something that I want to really be transparent about. Uh, the transformation, the realization, the possibility and probability of of making change at any age or any stage of your life. Uh, I was not a positive person 
We're very, I had the ego, the attitude, the chip on my shoulder, the entitlement, the bitterness, uh, the addictions, you know, the all, all of it wasn't a good teammate. Hmm? Certainly wasn't a good culture guy. You know, when you know about culture being, being everything, um, you know, but you gotta, you know, you gotta learn, hmm? you learn the hard way you know, over, yeah. over time. Um, what's working and what's not working. I even, you know, ask my clients and even myself, like take a good, long, hard, fucking raw look in the mirror you know? and ask yourself like what's working and what's not, you know? Mm -hmm. right. like, hey, is this selfish, narcissistic, egotistical attitude working for you? Clearly it's not, you know? Are you waking up feeling good about yourself and positive about the things that you're doing or not? Are you over-indexing at work? You know, and and drinking and and you know prioritizing the wrong things, you know, or what actually is really really important to you, you know? Mm -hmm. you know, and it was this series of choices, this series of questions I kept asking myself, you know, better one or better two? What do you feel better or worse? This versus this. You know? You're not waking up well. You're not treating people well. You're not serving your clients well. You know, you might look good on the outside. Hmm? Yeah, oh, yeah. You, know, you got the house, you got the cars, you got the wife, you got the kids, you got the partnership, you got, but doesn't feel right. You know, to your point, you're not radiating positivity. People are, you're not attracting the kind of people that you want. You're repelling them. Hmm? Yeah. And you're attracting yeah. the wrong kind of thing and it's perpetuating. And uh, I mean, it's like one step at a time. It's like one meter at a time, you know, that you put on the machine. You just got to work it. To get to get better, it doesn't happen by accident. It happens by design. Mm -hmm. So I gotta, I gotta, uh, of course, I'm gonna dig into that a little bit. So, at what point did you say this isn't optimized? I don't feel great. And by the way, I'll, I, you see it. I've certainly had moments like in my life like that. I'm not perfect. I have my moments, and it's like uh, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, but. I will tell you, Greg, to your credit, there's not a lot of people who want to say, you know what, I want to fix these things and I don't feel good about who I am. Some people are like, hey, I'm in my, uh, you know, whatever age and I, I don't want to fix myself. Like, mm -hmm. I, it is what I am. Like, it is what it is. I'm not changing. I don't have that whatever and I'm not changing. Why did you decide to change it and when was it? When was that moment? Look, again, I think we have a choice. Mm -hmm. We all have choices. You don't want to make the change, don't make the change, man. You know, like, who am I to tell you? Mm -hmm. But I just, I will tell you that if you want to make the change, it's possible. You can. If you're unhappy where you are, the way you're living, the way you're feeling, the way you're, whatever it is, it's possible for you to make change. But you have to want to do it. You know, I get calls from, from wives, you know, on behalf of their husbands. Mm -hmm. You get calls from friends of guys, you know, on behalf of the other. But unless you actually want it, Hmm? Unless you want to do the, nobody can do it for you. You can't come to the realization hmm? through somebody else. You got to get there. You, know, you got to get there yourself. Um, and I've been talking a lot about this, especially as I'm working on a new a new program. And originally, it was this concept of going from miserable to maximized. Hmm? Men that were miserable. Hmm? I mean, it's, it's it's applicable to women or any age, but really, we were talking about guys in middle age. You know, miserable and how do they transform and try to get to maximized or optimized, you know, like what you were talking about. And actually what we ended up landing on was most of these guys are not really miserable or don't want to admit that they're miserable. They're mediocre and they've accepted mediocrity. And that's a really scary fucking thing because that's where malaise sets in. You know, I'm not at rock bottom, not miserable. I don't want to admit that. I look around to the left and the right. You know what? By the way, misery's got a lot of company, you know? Oh, yeah. I really have to complain about. Again, I got, you know, the job and the life again. And they default back to justification. But what's really there is mediocrity. And how do we transcend mediocrity? Are you okay with mediocrity? Hmm? Or do you want to improve? Can you do better? Where, where do you want to go with this? But to your point, one, you have to do it for yourself. And two, for me, I think I'm a slow learner and a late bloomer now at, at 49. And it's taken a long time without a father figure, without good mentors, 
without even thinking in the realization and the acknowledgement and the vulnerability that I needed good mentor, that I didn't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. And I needed to go out and get some from people that were smarter than me, that were farther ahead, that could help me see around the bend because I didn't have a clear vision. It's a lot of that's why I started the podcast. And we talked about what everyone and their mother has a podcast now. You know, like, I, but I started the podcast 200 plus episodes ago so that I could talk to men like you and other men and I could ask them questions and I could learn. And then I could aggregate and curate and eliminate from what they told me what works, what lands, what maybe right. doesn't, and kind of build my, what I call maximized action plan from there. You know, what does Mark Magna teach me when I talk to you and I see what you do every day? What does Bob Harper teach me when I talk to Bob? You know, what is Billy Mann who wins Grammys and hits songs and is out on the road with pain? Like, what am I able to glean from these amazing guys? And how can I apply that to my own life? Because you know what? I can't do it alone. I don't have the answers. I don't have the know-how. So why don't I become a leader by following, you know, the tips and advice and mentorship of great men that are out ahead of me. Right. If I was smart about anything, that's probably the only thing I was really smart of was like, I don't know how to do it. I don't have all the answers. I know I need to make change and I want to, and I'm willing to work at it. Family, fitness, finance, food, fashion, fun. Who could I surround myself that could teach me about all these things? That's optimized in all of these areas. And how do I put it together? Mm -hmm. That's so powerful. It's interesting what our, our listeners uh, can pick up on. Here's the secret to a podcast. The reason we have podcasts is because if you've had 100 guests on, you have 100 coaches on, and you're taking tips and feedback and information from all of them, and you're taking little pieces that are going to help you inevitably be better if you care to be better. If you really want to be better, which is a scary thing because you have to shed the old, right? And with the old, gives you a some sense of security. That's why people don't want to change. It's scary to, to move into something different. Yep. And, and, and you've done that. You've done that. I think it's an interesting dichotomy too, Mark. For some people, it's really transformation and reinvention. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. others, I was talking about this the other day, it's release. Mm -hmm. I didn't reinvent myself. I released myself. This is really who I've always have been. I just really didn't know it and didn't allow myself to authentically live that way. I thought I had to be a different kind of person, buy into the hustle and the grind and the 24 seven and what it means to be an executive or a business owner or an entrepreneur, be friends with the dads just because my boys go to school with them, you know, hang out with these kind of guys just because we coach Little League together. You know, do these, you know, saying yes when I really wanted to say no, you know, doing things, going places, behaving certain ways that didn't really feel like me. But is, is, is that what like 40 something year old guys do? Like, is that like the community I'm in? Is that, and it never really aligned. You know, it was only when I started again to listen to other guys and see possibility and probability and positivity out there that said, you know what? Let me just try this differently. You know, like for 15 years, I was in the insurance and risk management business. Right. I don't have to sell insurance to real estate and property owners. What do I love? I love to eat and I love to drink and I love to work out. Like not drink alcohol, but like, you know, the smoothies and the juices and the supplements. Like yeah. I can work with all those companies and those brands. You know, why? Right. where can I start to combine personal passion with professional expertise? And not just follow the regular playbook, mm -hmm. but dress like myself and act like myself. And instead of having to go out drinking at night or playing golf, why can't I meet guys at anatomy for a workout in the morning in a smoothie and still do seven figure business? You can. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love so, that. You know, I, I think that. for everyone, it's a little bit differently. It's a little bit different. Are you trying to? So where did, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Please finish. No, I'm just saying, if you're trying to transform, if you're trying to change your lifestyle, if you're trying to lose weight, or if you're trying to get about, you know, there are different degrees of transformation, but there's also, I just wanted to end on that. There's also just this opportunity to release your true and authentic and genuine self. Mm -hmm. Those can be small that. little pivots and tweaks. So what, did you find yourself, I, I've heard 
you know, your story is certainly special and uplifting to hear. I've ha I've heard similar stories with men in their 40s or late 40s, and they say, you know, I was living this way, and it was torture. Like it, it, it didn't feel right. How was it for you? Was it at times? Was it was it torturous? And did you just have this underlying feeling of this is not what it's supposed to be like? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was torturous, I mean, but it's it it's like a slow, you know, it's like a slow death, you know. Again, it's it's that belief that again is this the best I'm ever going to look, the best I'm ever going to feel, the best my life is ever going to be, and it ain't that great, you know, like the old Billy Crystal line in in, in City Slickers. You know? Yeah, and yeah. great movie by the way. Great movie, and it's also not about just also quitting your job and following your passion and listening to the, you know, to love Gary Vee to an extent, but it's like, that could be galactically irresponsible advice again, when you're, you're married and you have kids and you have an overhead and you have, oh, it's about finding your place within the system. You know, if you don't fit within the system, you have a few choices, either get in line with the system or change the system. You know, for me, it was, you know, it was this slow kind of, feeling that was there for far too long of waking up tired, you know, not looking forward to the day ahead, being reactive instead of proactive or on defense, you know, the emails were coming in, I'm putting out fires, I'm not excited to speak to the clients, I'm drained on this, I'm dressing a certain way, and then can't wait to get out of those clothes when I get home and trying to do and burn the candle at both ends mm -hmm. and be present with my kids. But then I find out I'm the, I'm the guy that I'm railing against who's 20 feet off the sidelines buried in his phone because I can't, you know, because I've created no structure, no boundaries to the relationships that I have professionally. Mm -hmm. And I'm stuck on this wheel because all of a sudden, again, you've got a mortgage, you've got private school tuitions, you've now got three cars, you've got the requisite two or three vacations, you're a quote unquote partner in this firm and you've got to pull your weight and the weight becomes too much to bear. Mm -hmm. Keep loading up the bar, man. What's going to happen? You know, keep loading up the pitcher and eventually you just can't lift it. 100%. No matter how inspired, no matter how motivated you are, no matter how many memes you look at or other people, you've, you just can't move the fucking weight anymore. That's right. And you get to a point where you don't want to. And then you're really it. like, oh shit, I used to love to move the weight. I used to wake up wanting to move the weight. And now I don't even want to, you know, anymore. And it took, so how do we get back what matters most? Mm -hmm. At what point do we start to think to turn it around? Rock bottom before rock bottom? Mm -hmm. Is it our wives? Is it that picture that you look at of your family on vacation where your wife looks great, your kids look amazing, and you, you you're the outlier, man. Mm -hmm. You're the outlier in that shot. Mm -hmm. And I was the guy too, and you're flying back and everyone's happy there, a wonderful vacation. All I'm thinking about is, you know, the credit card bill that's going to come in in two weeks for the vacation, you know, and going back to work and the clients and this, it's perpetual, man. And, and it's all connected. So then you reach for the drink at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. That becomes part of your routine. Mm -hmm. right. Maybe you don't eat as well. You don't get the recovery. You don't emphasize the recovery, you know, the way you should. What do you need the recovery for? Because you're not really training anymore. You know, right. like when you're training well, you go for good recovery. When you're working and stressed and anxiety ridden and debt ridden, you go for a different form of recovery, which is you probably reach for the drink and the bad food and everything. It's all connected. But it was slow to get there, slow and long to get there and gradual. So you almost don't realize it. Mm -hmm. Like until like, wow, it just adds up. But it's also slow to get out of it. You know, I don't want to give the impression that it's immediate to get out of it either. It's not. There are no seven-minute abs. You know that better than anybody, right? I mean, preparation, consistency, accountability. You just got to start doing the work, putting the reps back in again. And then you start to realize, I like it better this way. I feel better this way. Instead of my tank getting emptied, my tank is filling up again. Everything I want exists. Guys like you, places like anatomy, people to be around, like it all exists. You just have to be willing to get outside your comfort zone and put yourself in that environment. 
for every guy that I was selling insurance to at night in a place that I didn't want to be. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with that business. Any business, right. nothing wrong with being part of a good company. My partners were amazing. The firm was amazing. Wasn't just, just wasn't me. But for every guy that you could sell a seven figure account to at night at a steakhouse or over drinks or on the golf course, the same guy exists. It's up at five o'clock in the morning. Hmm? Rowing, training, hmm? you but you can't be both. I mean, that, that's tough. And for far too long, I tried to do both and it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. So interesting. It's so interesting and powerful. Um, you know, it, it, hearing, hearing this from you is, is, is certainly enlightening, but you, know, you, you had a great statement in there. You said, you know, I, the same people exist. And I remember having a conversation with the guy and he said, you know, hey, Mark, the reason I party and drink and do all the things I do and the drugs I do is because... You know, all these people look up to me and they follow me. And I said, I, I don't understand. And he said, well, they follow me because I do this and I'm such a good time. I said, well, if you went to the movie theater and attended a movie, they'd follow you in the movie theater. You're a leader. And the ones who don't follow you, guess what? They shouldn't be in your circle. And that was it. He, changed, he actually, he changed his life. And you, you've, you've gotten it back. And you, and as I watch you on, on social and, and I hear other things and I see other things. I see you doing all these wellness treats and hacks and training. And I, I saw you uh, this morning training in, uh, is it HPLT with Brian? Yeah. So I was in New York with Brian Maza last weekend for his high performance lifestyle training weekend. Uh, and it was incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great group. Brian's great. Great guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he's done something really special with his group. But putting yourself in those circles that's a choice, right? You've made a choice to do that. And, and one of the challenges I've seen over the years is that when you lose it, you're like, man, I already know how long it's going to take me to get back to where I was. So I'm not ready for that. But the joy, the confidence, the uh, self-esteem is in you going back to the day to day. It's, no, it's Rome wasn't built in a day. It doesn't happen overnight, but the joy is once you get back on that path and you get back in that lane for your journey, you feel so much better so much sooner because the life, the personality that you have, it's in the day to day, right? It's almost a detriment to be able to, you know, when I see anyone just have the ability to get whatever they want, whenever they want. It's almost, uh, it's a detriment because you don't have to work for it and working for it. That's where the true joy comes in. That's why I've heard that people can get all these things. They're really not as happy because the self worth is about the path and the journey to get there. Mm -hmm. And so many just skip it. I'm like, that's why you don't feel great about who you are because you don't allow yourself to go through that process. And that process is why you become what you become. You can't expedite it and skip it. We've heard it a million times. They jump to the destination. Mm -hmm. They default right. to the destination. Right. And, right. and that's easy to do again. Mm -hmm. What's more challenging, again, is getting up every day and doing the work. Mm -hmm. What I find really interesting, what I find really inspiring mm -hmm, is to look at the people that I can depend on mm -hmm, and look at what they're doing consistently. And you look at the body of work that accumulates and then it gets over time. You know, okay, that's interesting to me. That's inspiring. That's the stuff I want to show my boys. You know, I know whenever I go to Miami, you know, I know exactly where you're going to be. You've earned that. I know it. You know, I can see it every day. You can't fake that shit you know, that's out there. Yeah. That's the journey. In you know. That's the work, you know, you're talking about the other, the guys that are putting it in too, and the time commitment again, and the consistency. Mm -hmm. And you probably get asked, how do you have time, you know, for, for all of this? How do you do all this? Or I don't have time. You know, one, we make the time. And two, you'd be shocked at how much time is available when you cut away and cut out the women, all the bullshit. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, I say this all, it's not what I'm doing. It's what I'm not doing. That's, That's what's right. opened up the empty space and the bandwidth and the ability to be able to do these things.
and to not check my phone mm, and be present when I talk to you. Mm, to be able to get the exercise in, to be able to spend the time with the family, to still make the same living, if not more, because you're doing less with more focus, you know, there. But it's when you just clutter, when you don't utilize your calendar well, when again, you're saying yes to things you should be saying no to, when you don't have boundaries or priorities and you're trying to fast forward to the destination versus actually slow down a little bit, breathe, enjoy the journey that's there, put the work in, believe in the process. You know? The SEALs were telling us this weekend, you know, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. That's right. It doesn't feel slow when you're in 50 degree water you know, by five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know, it, that, no, nothing feels smooth and fast at that point. It does feel very, very slow. But the point is, but the point is valid. Hmm? And we get there over time and over a body of work. I awesome. Look at the look at the individuals I think you're involved in, and while I don't know this involved with and I don't know the stories in detail, but look at how many nightlife guys have now become health and wellness in daytime. You know, they've applied because they're older now. Like they've seen my the movie. partner, my partner is a great example. Great That's example right. of that. Seen the movie. You know, you live, you experience, you get a little bit older, you get a little wild. Your priorities change. Maybe you have get married, you have a family. All of a sudden, you know, coming home at 5 a.m. is not as interesting as waking up at 5 a.m. And you have all these skills. You know, marketing skills and entertainment skills and hospitality skills, and you can apply them for good. Not that the other is evil, but it's bad, but you can apply them now you know, into all right. these different businesses and all these opportunities and go back to what you said about your leader. If you're a leader, people will follow mm -hmm. you. They'll follow you to the bar or they'll follow you to the gym. That's right. You decide. That's right. It's so true. It's so true. It's just, you know, you, 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 you try to figure out at a certain age, you realize like why, you know, I, sometimes I, I've said this to friends who are, you know, look, I go out and I have dinners where I eat something that maybe not the healthiest thing in the world. I think the point is I just try to put things in my body because I think, I feel like I deserve it. And I, I feel, I would tell my friends, I would say, why do you hate yourself so much? that you do those things to your body. I mean, I feel I'm at 45 years old. I feel amazing. I'm very fortunate. Um, but I feel like I deserve to feel good. So I'm going to continue to engage in those positive habits. And look, they're not for everyone. It's for me. I don't push it on people. I said, this is what I'm doing. This is what I do. And I feel great. And, and to go back to my uh, business partner, Chris, he's, he's done so many great things in his life and, and worked so hard. And he's doing like, you know, all these wellness things. He's the one who brought Vipassana into my life. He's the one that brought some of these amazing treatments into my life and watching him like, you know, train and, and take care of himself. It's like, it, it's impressive and inspiring to see. And I want to surround myself with people who are inspiring because they, they want to live the best parts of life through great wellness and fitness and, and being in a positive environment. And that's the essence of, uh, Anatomy. You, it's 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 not just culture, culture, culture. It's a, being around positive people. We have everyone has problems. We all have problems. There's always something to bitch about. But I, I want to surround myself with people who choose to see the light and, and see the best and the worst. Right? We say companies companies don't care about people. People care about people. That's right. mm -hmm. The culture comes from the people. You could change the name. You could change the look. You could get all the, the, the culture comes from the people. The care comes from the people. The culture that you've built at Anatomy and the reason it means something and people want to rep it and wear it and do it is because of the people and because of the leadership. And I think you also acknowledge that none of us are perfect. I mean, we gain right. so much more from individuals that are open to change, mm -hmm. that do change that learn and transform. It's like what my opinions and my beliefs are today, they may not be the same. You know, I reserve the right to change my opinions and my beliefs. Hmm? But right. what I'm gonna be is I'm gonna be genuine and I'm going to be authentic. And I'm going to believe and act the way I act and the way I believe until such time that maybe somebody shows me the light or I change or I, I go to evolve elsewhere. And I think that's what we're all trying to do. We're all just trying to do our best. Hmm? And we need people around us that help us to do our best and to teach us and to learn from and even be nice if we brought back some ability to agree to disagree too. 
Mm -hmm. without you know, we can still have mutual respect for one another and still disagree on certain things that are there but to your point surround yourself with like-minded people who lift you up mm -hmm. they're I out see. there and when you do that everything gets better you get a natural lift you start looking forward you know, to things I mean, you start waking up with energy and going to bed tired and it's the right energy that you wake up with for the right reasons and it's the right kind of fatigue mm -hmm at the end of the day. And that's that's a really cool feeling, especially when you haven't had it before and it's addictive. Hmm? For sure. So Ray, you're, you're uh, you know, I wanna respect your boundaries, but I know you're a dad. And what is it like uh, in this new, in your new energy and in reclaiming who you, your authentic self, What's it like? Had you have your children seen a shift? And are you much different with them? Is the, the activities much different? I guess I'm trying to ask uh, what the change has been with your relationship with them. If you're open to discussing it, if not, I completely understand. And then, uh, what what's the best advice you have uh, for parents out there? Great question. Well, I'm a first of all, I'm a wide open book. Um, I've got two amazing boys, my son, Auden, our son, Kate, and our, our son, Auden, is 18. So he's graduating this year from high school and will be headed to the University of Colorado into the Leeds okay. Business School there. Um, we're lonely now. He's been in Israel for the last uh, 25 days. He's, he's away for a month wow. with his senior class. Our younger son, Harper, is 15, so he'll be a sophomore in high school. Um, you know, to them, I'm, I, I'm just dad. Mm -hmm. The, the irony is a lot of this midlife male stuff and the things that I put out there, like it's almost more embarrassing, you know, to them <laughs> than, than, than anything. Uh, and they tell me which friends of theirs follow me on Instagram or the guys will make comments. And I was doing an IG live and, and a bunch of my son's friends logged on from Israel, you know, to be there. So I think it's a little, it's a little strange for them in certain capacities that I've gone public with a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I try simply, Mark, my wife and I, we just try to lead by example. We don't try to put too much pressure on them. I don't want to drag them and force them into working out with me or doing it. I want to just simply lead by example and have them gravitate towards hopefully healthy habits and behaviors and ask questions and know that anything that they want to do in life, they'll be supported in doing it um, and that it's out there for them if they're willing to do, do the work again and put in the reps. I grew up very entitled spoiled, you know, you all on the North shore of, of Long Island. I'm not a big believer that money buys happiness. I'm not a really big believer that money, that just throwing money at the problem solves the problem, you know, out there. I'm going to turn the corner on again, preparation, consistency, accountability, responsibility. We're not super strict either. Mm -hmm. uh, with everything that's going on in the world, I, there's plenty of hardship. Mm -hmm. Right. To a certain extent, can we make things easier? You know, not so easy that they don't learn responsibly, but you don't have to intentionally you know, make things harder and harder on them. And you try not to, to, to helicopter in that regard. Yeah, you know, I just want to love them. Again, I'm in the bonus time. You know, I just want to love them and be around them. I didn't have my dad around you know, at this stage. You know, so again, for me, it's just super, super important for them to see me doing things that are that that I believe are important and that are meaningful, and um, and for them to know that I'm there for them in anything and everything that they want to do, even when I annoy them because I'm overly affectionate, you know, uh, and I'm overly um, you know engaged in wanting to know everything that they're up to and what they're doing. Um, and Kate's been amazing in that regard too. But there's no better job than being the father of of two boys. So that's priority number one. And I'm fortunate at this stage of my life that I can devote a lot of time, you know, to them. And I, and I want to, um, and I'm happy and sad at the same time, thrilled for where they are in their lives. Very sad that, you know, our older one's moving out of the house and going off to college, but very, very excited that, that he is, you know, again, when I went off to college, you know, my dad couldn't get out of bed. You know, he was in cancer. He, he had cancer and couldn't get out of bed. Mm hmm. Um, so different experiences, you know, so you try to turn whatever you've experienced in life I mean, try to see it through a different lens and a lens of positivity and hope and opportunity. Um, 
and answer the questions for them that they may have that they don't even know that they have that you know, I didn't get answered you know? or I had to look harder, you know, for the answers or didn't have somebody, you know, there um, to help me with that. So that's the position I just try to put myself in for them. I don't know if that directly answers, answers your question, um, yes. but it's, but it's all of it, man. I don't know if you can like, I don't know if I can accurately put into words or articulate well enough, you know, what the role really means to me, except to say that it's top of mind in everything that I do. Hmm? Understood. Understood. No, that was great. That was great. Thank you. And, and you know, I'm, I'm sure uh, you, you, you just, in, you have to influence and impact them, but not, not just with your behavior, because that's a quite obvious one, but more with your, your wellness and fitness, even if they don't do it, they see, Hey, my dad's doing that. And you've taken on, I, I have get the feeling that you will always into training and fitness and you're certainly an athlete, but I feel like you've taken it to the next level, maybe the last five, 10 years, correct me if I'm wrong. And I want to talk a little bit about your wellness, fitness portfolio and what you do for yourself. And mm -hmm. let's get into that a little bit, like day to day, what, what, what do your days look like? And, and what does your fitness look like? How do you look at your fitness wellness plan? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really changed over over the years, the backstory it a little bit. Um, you know, the first weight I picked up, I was 13 years old, and I was getting the shit beat out of me in middle school every day. I was getting bullied. <laughs> I was getting these ninth grade or high school guys coming down to middle school basically to kick my ass every day because they didn't they didn't like me. And I had and I had an older girl older girlfriend, whatever that means, you know, at the time, okay. and they didn't like it. And they'd come down and beat me up. So my dad at the time said, why don't you pick up some fucking weight? Okay, <laughs> why don't you start to, <laughs> you know, there's only two ways that this can go. You're going to keep getting your ass kicked, or maybe you can try to do something about it, basically. Yeah. You didn't get kicked out of school, by the way, back then. You know, you didn't even really get suspended. Like, you just left school, you walked off property, people beat you up, and they showed up at school the next day. Like, that was the way it was. It's not, it's not right. the way it is you know, now. So I started lifting weights at 13. Um and got into the typical and kind of chest tries, back buys, 2,000 calories worth of gainer's fuel every day, and, and ended up doing some you know, teenage bodybuilding you know, type stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. Fell out of shape you know, in college when I got heavy into you know, partying and drinking and smoking and, and, you know, and not a healthy lifestyle at all. Um, and brought it back around really in my, in my thirties, you know, you graduate from school, you get a job. I was living in Manhattan, you know, you're, you're burning the candle at both ends. You don't even realize that you're really getting out of shape totally mm -hmm. in there, right. brought it back around really in my, in my thirties, you know, thanks to, to my wife also, and kind of that tipping point moment where you realize, holy shit, is this the size of my waist now? You know, is this kind of what's going on? Um, and got into CrossFit early stages of CrossFit, um, which was transformative, you know, for me. And over time, if we're fast forwarding, I'm 49, you know, right now, started to prioritize sustainability, longevity, started to become a little bit more of a generalist than a specialist, got involved with events like the D10 decathlon, you know, Dave Lazarus was in and a bunch of guys, oh, yeah. you know, and so that got me into sprinting, got me into jumping. You know, got me into a different type of, of functional fitness, which I really, really liked. Um, I like physical activity. So I got into boxing, mm -hmm. which I really enjoy. So that's my every my Friday activity, you know, now. I love being in the water, you know, to the point now for me, I take a total life wellness approach with, with fitness in my training. Fitness is on my calendar five days a week with two, two days off active recovery. Now, what I do in those five days is really different every day. Quite frankly, I'll wake up, I'll take a look at what you're doing and go, okay, do I feel like rowing, you know, getting on the erg bike or skiing? Maybe I'll do that today. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'll go see my buddies at Congo, you know, who I've been training with for a while, Docentage, yeah. and I'll go and I'll drop into their, you know, their place for an amazing workout. Or I feel like I want to get in the pool when I've been doing a lot of these XPT underwater Laird Hamilton style, you know, type type workouts. Yeah. Um, and again, boxing is Friday. So we finished that up, you know, this morning. I love walking, you know, I, I'll spend a lot of time in zone two cardio, you know, just walking around, yeah. you know, with my dogs or throw a weight vest on. Um, 
I feel like at this point, you know, the, again, the journey, the body of work, doing something physical, doing something active each and every day or five days a week, prioritizing recovery, love saunas, love cold plungers, the stuff that you're into, um, spending more time, you know, there, uh, just continuing to diversify, mix it up, you know, follow the teachings of good people and, and smart programming. I stay away from high impact. Really, in term, I don't love to run. You know, the the impact after several knee surgeries, dislocated hip. You know, then, so I don't love the pounding. Although we did ten miler, you know, at HBLT, which is, I like having the capacity. I like knowing that I could do almost anything. Put me into any situation, and I'll. I'm not going to win it, but I can get through it. You know, I have the capacity to go 10 miles. I got the capacity to climb that mountain. I can bench, I can lift, I can depth. You're not gonna drop me in the deep end of the pool and I'm not gonna be able to get out of it. I'm not gonna be the best, I'm not gonna win, but I'll be okay. You know, I won't, I won't embarrass myself and I won't embarrass the guy that brought me, that brought me there. So I just try to mix it up and then eat, eat well, 80, 20, like you. I don't wanna get, I don't wanna get hit by the bus. You know, all the fitness in the world is not going to save me if the bus runs me over and not have, right. you know, not having had a pizza, you know, in six months. That's right. So I indulge, try to keep it 80, 20, 70, 30, finish my kids' meals when they leave the leftovers. And there's a lot of my splurge, you know, there. Hydrate constantly, get enough sleep. You know, that's really the only stuff I track is sleep and recovery. And I don't count calories or macros. I don't write down how much weight I lift or anything anymore. And I just want to move well and feel well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a five, five day a week, you know, two day off minimum, you know, split. If I need more rest, I take it. You know, the aesthetics are a bonus. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like the aesthetics are a benefit and a bonus of good training and good nutrition and good recovery. And mostly Mm -hmm. the stress relief, you know, not under the same level of stress and anxiety and kind of discontent that I was feeling that really takes a toll I think on the, on the aesthetics and the performance. No. Big time, big time. How do you track sleep? I use a whoop, you know, I've got whoop on. Um, yeah. and that's pretty much the metric that I, that I use. There you go. <laughs> um, I think it's great. I like that it asks me little journal questions, you know, in the morning and reminds yeah. me that I take my athletic greens and have I hydrated properly and done that you know, as far as you know, supplementation and stuff goes, I try to keep it simple. I think I get most of, of what I need through my through my nutrition each day. I do take mm-hmm. athletic greens. I do drink 20 ounces of water as soon as I wake up. I do take creatine. I take some extra vitamin D, some fish oil. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for the most part, you know, I'm not loaded. I don't, you know, coffee is my is my pre workout. You know, I don't load up on a lot of extra products. The stuff in the brands that I do like. You know, I, they they provide something I think of value. You know, if I need a certain snack or a certain pick me up, they're just we have busy days in there. But I try to just eat real food for the most part and keep the supplements okay. to a minimum. Understood. Terrific. Do you have a go to? I know you 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 clearly stated that you diversify and you mix it up and try to decide what you're going to do for the day. Um, uh, shout out to the guys over at uh, it's Congo, right? Yeah, these guys over there they came to visit um but what's your go-to you know if you could only do one exercise and because you like it what would it be and then the second part of that question question would be what do you struggle with the most in training Mm. man right now i wish i had a pool like my buddy justin has built the most unbelievable pool in his in his backyard it's like a a replica of, of Laird Hamilton and Gabby Reese's pool at their house in, in Malibu, where it's got, it's about 15 feet deep. It's got ramps and levels and we can train in it. I just love the way I feel training in the water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if I could do more, that would be the one thing I wish I could do more of, you know, year round. I love the way my body feels doing that. Um, you know, if there's, I don't love being under heavy weight anymore. Understood. There's a there's Understood. a benefit to it. I'm not a limit, but I've made certain shifts. I mean, like from barbell to like a trap bar for deadlift. You know, I'm staying away from squatting and getting under heavy weight with the barbell, doing more kettlebell. You know, so I don't love being under heavy barbells and, and that kind of strain. And as far, mm-hmm. So I've tried to diversify, being able to, to still 
put on an, uh, an optimal load, but to try to do it in a different way right now, if that, if that makes sense. So I, I kind of don't look forward to that as much, you know, as, maybe as, as I, as I used to, it's heavy and it's hard, man. Um, I'm developing this love hate relationship with more again, non-impact cardio. A lot of the stuff that you're doing, I, you know, I've got, I've got the trifecta, you know, the, the rowing machine, the ski erg, the erg bike, um, spending more time on the Versa climber because of the boys at Congo and getting ready for a big mountain climb in Utah, the Jesse Itzler 29, 29 Everest challenge yeah. in Utah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did that a few years back. I did it in, um, in, uh, Vermont. Okay. It was rough. It was rough. Yeah. So wow. I'll, I'll take any, <laughs> any advice and any tips you've got. Um, so kind of got a love hate relationship with that kind of stuff, just knowing mm -hmm. how necessary it is. Um, but man, just getting in the mindset to say, I'm going to go, I'm going to go beyond this thing for 30 minutes an hour or whatever it is. It's, right. You know, right. when you come from the CrossFit, you know, background or even with boxing, like these rounds are two or three minutes. It's like, and now you're telling me I got to go long. Like, oh, yeah. That's a shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> and let me tell you, Greg, it is long. I, I, I'll tell you a quick story. So I think, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's 17 at the time it was 17 trips up. I mm. think it could, it could be wrong. It might've been 15, but, um, so up, up, and then they take you down either on the gondola or in a truck in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night, there's no one else up there. I mean, it might have been five guys up there. And I said, my strategy was I was going to knock that out as soon as possible. And I had Dolvit from The Biggest Loser in my tent. And Dolvit, went, he went to sleep, and he said, what are you doing? I said, bro, I'm, I'm going to, like, you know, have a few bars, have some nutrition, and go back out there because I want to knock this out. And it was very cold in the middle of the night. At first, you're motivated. You feel like Rocky. 2 a.m., it's pitch black. My music died. Mm. And I have no music out there. And you don't see any other lights. That could be bears out there. I don't know. And I, at the hospitality tents, they're very small. They have big bowls of Advil. And I was thinking, why is that Advil there? Three trips later, you're grabbing it. And you're, you're like, man, I'm going to need this. In some of the steps... Picture like a, you know, 24 inch box step up, but that goes on for like, you know, 800 meters. I mean, and it just pounds your quads. It's, it's not that it's hard, as you said, it's just long. So, but you're a super fit guy. You're, you're, you're going to crush it. And then a lot of the people there, I got to tell you, wow, what a group of overachievers. I mean, they are monsters, monsters. It's unbelievable. I'm looking forward to it, uh, and and thank you for sharing that. I'm, you know, I'm cautiously optimistic. You know, again, trying to continue to walk, just kind of looking at the mindset. Going, can I just keep moving forward you know, on this? Again, mm -hmm. not going there to win it or to break any records. Mm -hmm. Going with some really good friends, uh, a couple of college fraternity buddies, and 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 my buddy JT, who's uh, a restaurant mogul, you know, down here, and and we just look for different challenges and experiences. And I really do enjoy right. putting them on the calendar, you know, months ahead of time. I give myself something to to look forward to, you know. And even again, talk to the talk to the boys about, and then, you know, talk to Kayla. These are some of the things that I want to do, and then how do I back into making sure I have enough time for them and enough time for her and pay for this stuff, you know? Like all of it's you know, kind of it's all connected again, and part of the plan, you know, of of doing these things is you know what. You know, what steps did I take to get here? Not just the steps on the mountain itself, but I put this on the calendar. And now what steps do I have to take every day? You know, again, with my family and my fitness and my finances and my food and the fun that I, in order to get there and truly enjoy it so that I can be present at the actual experience. And as you said, the people right. that you meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Great people out there. Okay, so we covered your fitness. Uh, what's your favorite recovery tool? I have a guess, but what's your favorite recovery tool? Uh, I'm going to give you two. I'm really into, con into contrast therapy, you know, now. Okay. So yeah. I love the sauna and I love the cold punch. And, you know, this was an investment I made around COVID. You know, things obviously changed with COVID. I never had a gym in my house. I never had any, any workout equipment in my house ever mm -hmm. until... Yeah. COVID. I always thought those things were, were, were separate, you know, like when I would get home again from work, it was the last thing I was thinking about or getting up in the morning, I'd take my dogs out and then I'd get to work and 
I never had any equipment at, at home at all. Um, and when COVID came around, you know, it necessitated a change there. So equipment was hard to come by, but I just started ordering stuff on a, and, and things started showing up at different times. Recovery also has become a bigger priority. Um, I'm a big fan of places like Restore Hyper Wellness, um, where you could go for cryo and you could go for Normatec boots and you could go for, you know, the, the, the saunas and all that. Um, I actually did, and I wanted more access to it. I was feeling better. So if you don't are not able to have it in your house, there are places that you can go. But I did make the investment in an infrared sauna and a cold plunge. And it's been a game changer for me to have 24-7 access to it. And part of my nightly routine is going for a 30-minute sauna, you know, and a three to five minute cold plunge. And I sleep like a baby, you know. So I try, you know, I'm some people do it in the mornings and the post work. I mean, everybody's a little different if, if you're if you're into this stuff. I found the evening really works well for me. It's a it's a time for me to decompress. Um, how Greg? Greg, how much? Uh, how um, how many hours or how much time before you actually lay it down? Do you do that? So if we typically eat dinner, you know, six or seven o'clock, we kind of you know kind of early. You know, I'll try to get in there at around you know. 7.30, 8 o'clock, 30-minute sauna. I read in there. Maybe I do a little breath work in the sauna, answer some emails, maybe post some shit from the day, you know, story. The 30 minutes goes pretty fast. It's about 150 degrees in, in the infrared. Um, and then step right into the cold plunge for usually one or two rounds of, of three to five minutes. And I try to get into bed by about 9 o'clock each night. Okay. Um, with lights out somewhere around 10, not often and not always successful mm -hmm. <laughs> um, in there. But again, our boys are also kind of at the age where they can pretty much take care of themselves. They get the homework done. You know, we're lucky maybe Harper will come downstairs and still want to watch, you know, FBI or, or you, know, so <laughs> you know, now the NBA playoffs with us for a while. And I'm always the first one to fall asleep. Oh, yeah. I know that I'm 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 a first sleeper as well. And my wife hates it. We we get a movie and I'm like 30 minutes in, I'm out. And I always say, well, "What happened? What happened in that movie? It was pretty interesting." It's the absolute joke in our family that I haven't seen a movie in 17 years or something like that <laughs> because you know, well, you know, at least you're doing it at home. I used to do it in the movie theater. So thank we do it there too. We would go to those, you know, you know, like the eye picks or the fancy ones, you know, and they give you the blank and they're like. Fuck it, dad's out. Like they just, I was like, this is a twenty-four hour nap for me. That was always the joke. I would go and I would get a two hour nap. That's funny. That's hilarious. Peaceful though. Re re uh, restorative. Best. Restorative sleep. I'm gonna uh, try to make it through Top Gun tonight. I'm going to see the I'm going to oh, see the tonight? new Top Gun I got invited tonight. So I'm gonna to try to stay awake for oh, this one. That's gonna be fun. Let me know how it goes. Let me know how it goes and let me know how the movie is if it's worth seeing. Totally. I mean I can't I'm not so sure you redo Top Gun or it's not really redo. It's a continuation, right? So it, it'll be good. I don't know much about the backstory at all. I was just thank. I was just happy that I got invited. Said yes, and we'll see if I can stay respectfully stay awake till. No, it, it'll be good. It'll be good for sure. So you're in Austin, correct? I'm in Houston, actually. Houston. I'm sorry, yes. Houston. What's the fitness wellness scene like down there? Um, probably not as hot and heavy as Austin, you know, which is <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Austin's about a two and a half hour drive from here. I do spend a lot of time in Austin. You know, Houston's the fourth largest city in the country, yet I think we're still, we still typically get things a little later when it comes to health, you know, and fitness. I mean, years ago, yeah. I opened a rowing studio down here way before our oh, time, yeah. you know, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, trying to get, become the, the flywheel or soul cycle of rowing. Um, they, they weren't ready for it. I weren't, weren't ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. um, but similar things, you know, we didn't get a soul cycle, you know, for a long time. We had people that brought their own version of it, you know, down down here. I think we're getting better. Um, Houston's so so spread out, but I think we're getting mm. we're getting better. Um, but again, to your point, even you know, even if we're not recognized as one of the fitter cities, you know, in the country, again, everything you want still exists and is still out there. You know, I've, I have, I, I've found my tribe, you know, I've got Will who comes over and boxes with me on, on Friday and he's awesome. And Lionel, 
McBee was my training partner and who's an incredible, you know, pound for pound endurance, incredible athlete. And, and he trains with me and my buddies again at Congo and Dos and Taj, who I've been training with for, for years, you know, what you want, you can find. Um, and those guys become, you know, they become your friends, they become your mentors, advisors, confidants and all this, you, you only, you know, I'll take, I'll take quality over quantity any day. So that small tight circle, again, getting in the pool with what my buddy Justin Singer is doing in calisthenics and mechanics and XPT, you know, they're, what's cool is you find these people that have their passions too, and they're so good at what they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's room for everybody to be successful and I can move around and again, I get a ton out of it. Love supporting them all. You know, it's, it's a, it's a cool, cool community. Awesome. Awesome. How do you, so you, we, you hit on it a little bit before, but we, we touch fitness, wellness, recovery, uh, favorite training, but you know, you got to protect your energy overall. Um, we've, we've all had people in our lives that, you know, come into our circle, uh, I just call it and not trying to go to negative town, but they're infiltrators and they, they want to be in the group, but their, their, their energy is off. How do you create those boundaries to, to – well, number one, how do you identify them? How quickly can you identify them? And then number two, how do you keep those people at arm's length and what's your strategy for that? It's, it's challenging because mm -hmm. on one hand, mm -hmm. I'm a pleaser. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. a pleaser. I want to say yes more than I want to say no. Um, okay. I'm working as a coach also you know, right now. So to the okay. – here's the other point, you know – the individuals in a lot of ways that want to break in that maybe don't fit the don't are those the ones that need the help the most, you know, the reason, and are those the ones you need to turn to and, and reach out and lend the hand and accept them in because, you know, that's their way of asking and trying to make change and trying to transform, you know, again, back to none of us are perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was the guy trying to break in, you know, and trying, if, if people weren't nice to me when I first went back into the gym, you know, or weren't accepting of me when I showed up and had no idea how to row, you know, or couldn't box my way out of a paper bag or almost drowned the first time. If it wasn't for supportive, welcoming people within those communities, you know, then maybe I don't have a positive experience and I don't stick with it, you know, as much. And I don't make change and the guard stays up, you know, the chip on your shoulder never gets knocked off, any of that. So it's, it's challenging in that regard. But also I'm very, I'm an introvert. I think I'm an, I'm an extroverted introvert. I really prefer to be home. I really prefer to be with Kate. I really prefer to be with my boys. We really do not socialize much in terms of, we don't put a lot of dinners on the calendar with other couples and other things. Yeah. Um, so by default, I've also, since I've written so much about a lot of this, I actually don't get invited to a lot of things or places because when you put yourself out there and you say, look, I don't like to fish. I don't like to golf. I don't like to drink. I don't like to do this. I protect my time. And, you know, a lot of people stop inviting you. You're like, okay, asshole. You know what? We're not inviting you to the party because you've written extensively about not wanting to go to the party and what you think about, you know, when, when you go there. Um, you know, I try to say no politely. I've tried to really, you know, that's a muscle I've had to start exercising and flexing is, is saying no politely um, and developing some strength from that too. You know, thank you so much for, re for reaching out, but I am heads down and laser focused on my goals for 2022. I would love for you to reach back out, you know, in fourth quarter, okay? When I'm planning for 2023, you know? Or, mm -hmm. you know, you just try to be polite. You try to be respectful about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to get really pissed and take it really personally when people didn't respond to me. You know what, I mean? right. what I've also come to realize is my priorities are not your priorities. Mm -hmm. And your priorities are not my priorities. Mm -hmm. right. Nobody's sitting around waiting for Greg Scheiman to call them to sell them insurance, you know, that day. I mean, never, you know, 15 right. years. Mm -hmm. You've got a thousand things that are going on, you know, on your plate. For me to just think that I could break in and get time and, hey, let's train tomorrow or, you know, I need I need your advice on this or that or why don't you just come with me over here and expect an immediate result. That expectation is not really rational in a way. Mm -hmm. So I stop taking things personally. Mm -hmm. And I try to I try to help people and explain to people again that, that, you know, having boundaries, being able again to say no politely. Um, 
having your priorities in order, letting people know what's most important you know, to you, you know, helps to kind of create that, that framework. And again, if you want to see me somewhere, you want to get my time, come meet me in the morning for a workout. Let's go for a walk. Let's combine some things, you know, that are, that are there. Mm -hmm. There's opportunity for that. Or, hey, let me give you a link to my calendar. Like if you, I mean, you know, when you kind of, again, curate that and aggregate that very carefully, you know, who can gain access and maybe who can't based on, but I'll give you access to my calendar, but the call could be 15 minutes. I don't really have the time anymore for, for, for lunches or, or, you know, certainly for dinners or I'm not, you know, like, if you're asking me to meet you at seven, eight o'clock at night, like you really don't know who I am <laughs> for the most part, either. you know, like, right, like you haven't right, done your right, homework. Right. You know, like at certain point, if I'm going to approach you or anybody with something, yeah, I want to do my homework first. Mm -hmm. It's got to be on your terms, not on my terms. Mm -hmm. There. Got it. Got it. I love that. Um, listen, this has been super enlightening, super powerful. Uh, you've given me so many great takeaways given the audience so many great takeaways i don't want to uh you know crush you with the time i know i've already been on for a while here i have a speed round of questions going to get the audience to know you a little bit better um you know um your podcast do you have two or now you, you have uh, one? one podcast which is more than i can handle yes it's more, more than enough okay. just the midlife mail podcast great find job. it wherever podcasts are one episode a week yeah, it's, it's a great podcast. Everyone should check that out. He has some awesome guests on there, and he does a great job hosting the show. So we're going to go through a speed round of questions, uh, Greg. And, um, sports guy? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Are you a sports guy? Okay, perfect. Give me one word, answer, sentence, whatever you want. Okay. Favorite team? Yankees. Favorite sports team? Yankees. Yankees. What was it? Yankees. I get a, I get a lot of Yankees. Favorite athlete favorite athlete of all time and then favorite current athlete all time bobby nystrom new york islanders number 23 scored the overtime goal to beat the philadelphia flyers to start the four stanley cup run remember i'm a long island guy mm -hmm. we had season wow. tickets to the that islanders those are the best experiences of my life with my dad going to all four of those cups mm -hmm. all That's of awesome. all time Man, I'm a Brady guy. I'm a University of Michigan guy. I'm a Brady guy. He's in his 40s. He's getting better with age. Like, even there's one of your quintessential midlife life male guys. Whether that lands in there or not, like, I'm a Brady guy. Yeah. No, I hear you. It's, it's so, I love to see Brady win because he's such a well rounded human being and he's a great guy. He was one mm -hmm. of my teammates. I was a Amazing. teammate with him when I was with the Patriots. He's the nicest guy and people hate him. It drives me crazy. I don't understand how you can hate Tom Brady. It's like you don't like apple pie. I don't, I don't get, get it, it either. I love I love the guy. Um, I'm just I marvel at what what he's able to do and what he continues to do and I just I think the smile slash smirk, you know, keeps getting bigger, you know, each <laughs> yeah. and I love to see that. I love it too. I love it. I love it. Uh, your favorite pastime Mm. I think listening to music with my dad, you know, oh, wow. I mean, we always had convertibles around, you know, on Long Island. He introduced me to a ton of music. We would drive around with the top down. I mean, if you can call that a pastime, like that's the thing that, that comes to mind, like being in the car top down. He was always super tan, you know, <laughs> music was on. I mean, Back learning about, you know, the Big Bopper and Buddy Holly and Richie Val and all and like all those, you know, old artists and Dion and all this them stuff that I still remember to this to this day. Mm -hmm. That is great. That is great. Uh, awesome. Favorite movie. Miracle. Great movie. Did you play hockey? I never played. And um never played hockey. Love Miracle, love the O'Connors, you know, who put that together. My buddy Josh Fagan was one of the associate producers on that movie. I love that story. I showed that movie to our 11-year-old all-star team in West University Little League. He used mm -hmm. it. Uh, we went all the way to the state 
you know, state championship with that. Um, that's a deep movie. You know, the, the, the name on the front of the jersey is way more important than the name on the back, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, he's unbelievable. Herb Brooks, they don't make him like that anymore. Great coach. And I'm an Islander guy, remember. So even the Brooks thing, is it, it, that's tough. You know? <laughs> like, oh, it's oh, yeah. Rangers experience. But there's that oh, yeah. movie is, is fantastic. Great movie. Uh, favorite book? The Fountainhead. Favorite type of music? Guess you call it like alt rock or hard rock. I'm a foo fight, you know. I'm a, I'm a foo fighters yeah. guy. You know, I'm still I'm still a metal guy. I'm a Guns and Roses guy, but I'm also like a Kings of Leon guy, and you know, yeah, Black yeah. Keys, yeah. you know, guy. I don't want to be. I don't want old guy music. You know what I mean? Like, like even I, I do. I still play in a band. You know, I'm used to the guitars. But you know, every you know, we do a couple of gigs a year for fun. Um, but it does run the spectrum. We play hard alternative rock to keep us from feeling like old guys. But even last week, I went to see Mike Campbell um, from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Mm -hmm. He was playing with Stan Lynch from the Heartbreakers on drums. And, and, and my buddy Jason Sine is on guitar. Like, I love that classic Petty vibe, too. Awesome. Awesome. Do you have a transitioning to food here? Do you have a favorite supplement? Athletic Greens. Athletic my Greens. Daily. What, who is it? Specific company? Athletic Greens is what it's called. It's, that's um, the yep, that's the company. It's it's basically one packet or one scoop that's your daily nutritional insurance policy, they call it. It's all the vitamins and everything and vegetables that I, you know, makes me feel like I get it all in. Okay, perfect. Favorite food? I'm a steak guy. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a meat steak. and potatoes guy. Okay. Favorite steak restaurant in Houston? Mm. Uh, Papa Steakhouse, but I mostly actually, ironically enough, mostly we grill at home. Mm? Nice. Steaks at home. Nice. Steaks at home. I feel like I can do that pretty well. I'm not a great cook, but when it comes to to making steaks, we grill mostly at home. I love that. Favorite cheat meal. I hate using that terminology, but favorite meal. You know that you go off the rails with. Burgers. Mm -hmm. If I'm falling off the rails, burgers. I'm a bar food guy. Mm -hmm. It's burgers, fries, mm -hmm. wings, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, I would say, you know, certainly it sounds like your father left an amazing impact on your life. Um, outside of family, who is the most influential uh, person in your life slash mentor? Oh, wow. I think my experience with Mike with Michael Eisner taught cool. me the most. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Dude, but out, it's hard when you put it outside my immediate family <laughs> you know, in there. And, and I'll say this, and I wish this wasn't the case. Um, I didn't have a lot of great mentors you know, coming up. I didn't realize until much, much later mm -hmm. how valuable and important it was to have great mentors. Um, but I think the years that I was partners in business with Michael Eisner taught me the most about leadership. I got the best advice from him. I got the harshest, the most real advice. Mm -hmm. I found myself in a position of wanting to please mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and do do better. Um, right. And that had a lot to do. Had a lot to do with him. Learned a lot during those years. Terrific. Okay, last question, Greg. You're standing in front of a. 50,000 young people in their late teens, and you're going to give them some, uh, some advice, the most important advice you could give anyone and the most important thing that you think that they need to hear, what would that be? Chasing authenticity where authenticity does not exist is exhausting. Be yourself. Be yourself. Mm -hmm. Be yourself. That's great advice. Great advice for anyone. Greg, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time and um, letting us chat, man. It was awesome. It was awesome. Again, Mark, this is a pleasure and a privilege. I am such an admirer of, of yours and what you do every day and what you've built with anatomy. Uh, we talked about time and the value of time. I don't schedule anything 
after that. Like you have as much time as you need. You always get as much time. Um, because for me, this is this is uh this is what I truly enjoy doing is is listening and learning from men like you. So thank you so much. Well, uh, the feeling is mutual. Thank you so much. Have an amazing weekend. Please give my best to your family and uh, keep inspiring us. Okay. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you. You as well. Thanks so much.